So with all these talks about uh, enzymes, which are obviously very important, we've talked about their active site and their other groups, would it not be useful if we were able to see how enzymes are working in real time? The problem is we can't really see how enzymes move. We can't really see how enzymes are reacting with substrates using our eyes uh, for the very simple reasons that enzymes are extremely small. Um, and even with the best microscopes in the world, remember, if you have an electron microscope, um, you would, we would not be able to see enzymes because, again, too small. And even if you could see an enzyme... Um, Electron microscopes can't show movements, so you'll just get a still image. You can't see how enzymes are reacting with the substrates. Uh, so if we can't see how enzymes uh, move and work and react with substrates, what do we do then? So we try to describe their functionality using something called models. And a model is just be not, not, we're not talking supermodels here, we're just basically using, a model is just an analogy or a comparison used as an example, okay? so. Uh, to to try to convey a rather uh, difficult idea, we try to use two ways to describe how enzymes work. The first model is using something known as the lock and key model, and the second model is the induced fit model. So let's not waste time and let's immediately go into the lock and key model. The lock and key model basically is trying to equate the enzyme and the substrate to a lock and key. Just like how a lock has a specific key required to open it, the enzyme is specific to a substrate due to their shapes, due to their complementary shapes. So the enzyme's active site is highly specific to the substrate or complementary to the substrate. I've mentioned before in the previous video that students sometimes make the mistakes and they say that the enzyme's active site has the same shape as the substrate. That is wrong, by the way. The enzyme's active site actually is highly specific and complementary or matching to the substrate. They don't have the same shape. That's a very important thing to understand. So, for example, if I'm just uh, representing the enzyme here in this purple color, uh, this purple color structure, this is an enzyme. Uh, and as we can see a substrate, a substrate is just something that reacts with the enzyme. And as you can see, the active site of the enzyme, which I'm highlighted, okay, is complementary to the bond within the substrate, which I've also highlighted. So the highlighted regions are actually highly specific, complementary, or matching. Now because they are matching, they are able to then bind to each other and form something called the enzyme substrate complex. If you remember in the previous video, the enzyme substrate complex forms because of the interaction of the R groups in the enzyme's active site and the substrate. It's just a temporary linkage, by the way. Temporary meaning to say it's not forever. It's just for a while, for a reaction to happen, so that the R groups can weaken the bonds, so it makes it easier. It reduces the activation energy required for the reaction to happen. And once it's reduced the activation energy, in this case, it will, the hydrolysis successfully happens if this enzyme is a hydrolytic enzyme, and the substrate is now converted into products. That's essentially what happens. And look at the enzyme. The enzyme is basically unaffected, and the enzyme can be reusable in this situation. Now, the problem is, what if there's another type of substrate trying to react with this enzyme? Would they be able to react with each other? Now, based on the lock and key model, no, it will not be able to react with each other. The reason is because the shape of the substrate is not complementary to the active site of the enzyme. So, it cannot form the enzyme substrate complex. No reactions can take place in this situation. Therefore, nothing happens. But here's where there's another type of model used to describe how enzymes function. And this second model over here is the induced fit model. Now, the induced fit model states that the active site is not rigid. The active site of the enzyme is flexible. Now, what do I mean by flexible? Imagine an enzyme where I'm just highlighting uh, with the substrate. Okay. Now, 
based on just this uh, diagram here, will they be able to form the ES complex? Yes, they will be able to form the ES complex. The reason why they are able to form the ES complex is because the shape of the substrate is complementary to the active side of the enzyme. So they can form the ES complex. But what if I were to draw out another substrate? Now in this situation here, will it then be able to react with the enzyme? If you were following the lock and key model, the lock and key model says, no, it can't because the shape is not matching. But the induced fit model is trying to tell us that some enzymes, not all, but some enzymes have a rather flexible shape. So even though at first they were not complementary, but what may happen is the active site is malleable and the active site changes its shape to fit the substrate or the active site changes slightly to fit the substrate and therefore it still is able to form the enzyme substrate complex. So this is what is meant by the active site is flexible. So the active site's shape is not just in one fixed position. It is actually able to mold itself to the shape of the substrate, reduce the activation energy, and catalyze the chemical reaction that needs to happen. And once the substrate in this case has been broken down into products and detaches from the enzyme, look at the active site. The active site returns back to its original position. So the beauty of the induced fit model is that this enzyme was able to react with two types of substrates. So in the lock and key model, the lock and key model here just basically says that the active site is fixed and it only matches one specific substrate. And based on my diagram here, even though there are two substrates over here, it's only the substrate on the left that can actually bond with the enzyme. The substrate on the right is unable to do so. <laughs> But in the induced fit model, however, both substrates are actually able to react with the enzyme because the enzyme's active site is able to fit or able to change its shape to match with whatever substrate that reacts with it. So, by comparison, the active, for the lock and key model, the active site is rigid and fixed, but for the enzyme in the induced fit model, the active site is more flexible. So, of course, some students will ask them, okay, um, fine, I get this point, but then which model does the enzyme follow? Does the enzyme follow the lock and key model? Does the enzyme follow the induced fit model? Honest answer, it can be both, by the way. Some enzymes may subscribe to the lock and key, some enzymes may prefer to do induced fit. It really depends on the situation. It really depends on the type of enzymes. As students, do you have to know which enzymes do lock and key and which enzymes do the induced fit? No, you don't. You just have to know what it stands for and what's the difference between the two models. And there are some similarities too between the two models. What are the similarities? The similarities between the two models are they are able, when they are able to react with the substrate, they are able to form the enzyme substrate complex. They lower the activation energy required for the chemical reactions to happen. And once they convert the substrate into products, the enzymes are then reusable, no matter what the model is.